more Cox Eternal Champions series is interesting to discuss. Some stories have direct analogies to or inversions of the work of Robert E. Howard, like Elric being a deliberately inversion of Conan the Barbarian. Others, like Hawkmoon, go in radically different directions. The first Von Beck novel, which I'm covering today, uh, The Warhound and the World's Pain, falls more into the former camp, feeling like an inversion of Solomon Kane in multiple respects. The Warhound and the World's Pain is, unlike the other Moorcock material I've covered to date, set in Earth's past, and instead of a possible future or a other world entirely, it follows Ulrich von Beck. Beck is a mercenary and free thinker in the Thirty Years' War, whose company has recently been wiped out in a previous battle. In his travels, he ends up in a seemingly abandoned home, only to discover that it is the dwelling of Lucifer, as in the Lightbringer, Morningstar, you know, Satan. Old Scratch has a job for Ulrich. He needs him to find the Holy Grail. It seems that the devil has, after all this time, come to the realization that he was in the wrong, and he'd like to patch things up with Jehovah. Obtaining the Grail, and with it the cure for the world's pain, would allow him to do that, but he can't do it himself. So, he needs assistance from Von Beck. Lucifer feels that as a learned free thinker, courageous warrior, and man of integrity, Von Beck has exactly what it takes to do the job. And as a hardened veteran of the Thirty Years' War, with all that entails, and with him being a mercenary, this having changed his allegiance, Von Beck is absolutely damned to hell, which gives Lucifer the leverage he needs to persuade Ulrich to take on the job. You do the job, you don't go to hell. And if he needs further incentive, Von Beck falls head over heels for a woman who is another damned soul, and the feeling is reciprocated, so if Von Beck succeeds, uh, Lucifer will throw in her soul as well, in the sense of not throw it into the inferno and just let her be, you know, ha have, a, have a decent afterlife. This leads to our grand quest, which takes Ulrich von Beck, along with the companion he picks up along the way, um, on this, well, grail quest throughout Europe, both in both the real and supernatural forms, um, which... It's important to mention the story are like almost parallel universes uh, in order to retrieve the grail, all in just one fairly short book. That's actually my complaint, honestly, is for something as big as an actual grail quest, it should feel bigger, more eventful. Certainly things happen over the course of the story, um, but a lot more things are things which we are told about and never shown. Like there's an interlude involving Von Beck uh, helping teach some giants in the magical world how to make windmills, which is a great bit. On the one hand, it's he has a throwaway joke, but on the other hand, it could be an interesting story out of this. Maybe it's because he thought the idea sounded better uh, when he pitched it or came up with it than the actual execution was. Maybe Moorcock's editor said he needed to prune this down a bit, and Moorcock didn't feel it was worth fighting over. Maybe the deadline was coming up if you're going to revisit in a later story or collection of short stories like he did with Elric. I don't know. In any case, it makes for a whole bunch of chunks where I'm going, as a reader, hang on, you can't just leave us with one or two sentences and then drop it there and forget about it. you got to expand on that concept a little. Like, my sense is a short story. If you pick up one of the Daw Elric paperbacks, like like The Dreaming City, or um, Arkham Omnibony, or Stormbringer, or whatever, Sailor of the Seas of Fate. You pick one of those up and look at how fairly small those are. It's like, that is about the length of this book. To put this in comparison, for in terms as far as Grail quests are concerned, this is uh, part one of the Penguin edition of Mallory's Le Morte Arthur. You could fit to the Warhounds and the World's Pains in the first half of the Mort Arthur, the, the Mort to Arthur. Uh, the second half is the same length. So, and the second half is where you're going to find the Grail quest. So, yeah, that's th there's a lot of summarizing there, and the rest of it is okay. It's not helped by the fact that Orcs Companion, a Kazakh swordsman, um, 
He starts out racist and anti-Semitic and never really changes in that regard. It comes up less often throughout the story, but he's still a character who, like, at one point in the story, excuses himself from an important exposition dialogue scene because the young girl who's staying with a with a the hermit who's providing this exposition is a virgin, and he needs to go rape her. The rape doesn't happen off camera. He just walks out, commits an act of sexual assault, and comes back in as if it was ain't no big deal. And aside from the girl, nobody else treats it like this is any big deal. And it is otherwise not commented on. On the one hand, I get it. Von Beck has seen some shit over the course of his travels. Uh, and the Thirty Years' War was utterly horrific in terms of the way the war was fought and the toll it took on the population who was caught in the middle of it um, in a lot of respects. If you want to see a movie that kind of gets into this somewhat, I recommend seeing the film The Lost Valley. But, like, say what you will about how sexual assault is depicted in Game of Thrones, be it television series or the novels, or in Berserk as a manga. Whether or not the sexual assault actually needs to be there, or if it could be replaced from with something else, when it happens, they, they the author finds a way to have it narratively serve a purpose to the story. It is not... It, 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 there's a reason for it to be there. It's not just a throwaway line that otherwise serves no purpose and basically exists to pad out a page. This is kind of gross. And it's a shame because otherwise the book is fine. The finale of the book is really interesting. And I think that the that this book gets into comments better on the relationship between God, the devil, and human religion than even Gomer the Guy's Devil Man does. It's just the route the book takes to get there, to get these bits at the beginning, at the end, that book ended. It's just kind of eh. And when you're telling a story about a grail quest, that journey is pretty important. Now, if you want to pick this up, this was included as part of Galance's Von Beck collection, and it is available from Amazon.com and uh, all Libris, and I th there's a digital edition um, through Kobo as well. I will have the link to all that will be in the show notes, and buying anything through that link will support the site. Later, I shall we shall get to the other Von Beck book that I have covered. Um, that I have read, which is uh, gets into the French Revolutionary period and a little more, little more swashbuckling in some respects, a little more problematic in others. And we'll cross that and we will deal with that bridge when we come to it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 